Hey guys, it's Dawn. Uh, in this video, I want to show you how you can create a sales funnel using lead pages. Now, lead pages is another application that I discovered at the time when I was using um, first click funnels and then the power lead system. But what I liked about lead pages was their designs. Um, it was like so professional, everything looked so sleek beautiful clean and it's um a lot less expensive than click funnels so click funnels is 97 dollars a month lead pages is 37 dollars a month so it was a far throw from um the amount that click funnels were charging its users and lead pages could pretty much do most of what click funnels does so in this video, I want to show you how you can create a sales funnel using lead pages. With lead pages, you can actually um, create landing pages. Uh, you can create blog posts. I have a post in on my blog where I speak about using lead pages for one page blog posts. You can also use it for e-commerce if you have one product that you want to sell and you don't want to build out an entire Shopify store. Or an entire WooCommerce store, you can use lead pages to sell a single product. So to start with, to start showing you how you can design and create your um, your sales funnel, um, what you will do is you would go to the lead pages website, or there's a link in the description box below, which has a my referral link uh, to lead pages. Um, and if you do use that referral link, I do get a percentage uh, um, from Lead Pages just as a thank you for referring you to their brand. It, it costs you nothing extra, um, so you don't pay anything more than what Lead Pages charges its own customers. But Lead Pages simply gives me a percentage of the sale just as a thank you, and I also thank you for using that link. So. Now with that disclaimer over, I'm going to sign into my Lead Pages account and I'm going to show you how you can actually start, how you can create your own sales funnels. Now you can create your sales funnels with any business. I have a link in the description box as well with um, a link to a blog post where I speak about sales funnels. And um, basically you can create a sales funnel for a network marketing company, um, a, an online business, uh, if you are selling a course or um, doing a webinar or anything like that, you can create a sales funnel. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at the templates to see what type of templates catches my eye um, and we'll start from there. Lead Pages has many templates, um, I think over 100 templates, so you can easily filter through and decide which type of template you'd like to use. I am going to just go here, filter by, then I'm going to come down and go into opt-in because I just want to create a very simple sales funnel, like a, um, a two-step or maybe three-step sales funnel. Um, so I'm going to use this one, which is the health and fitness opt-in page. Um, you can preview it and the preview is just basically going to show you what it looks like, what exactly you are getting if you decide to use this template. So this is pretty much what it looks like. If you're happy with that, you can simply say use this template. Okay, once you're in the lead pages, uh, um, lead pages editor, you will have some boxes on the left hand side which are your widgets and your widgets okay well let's first name this so i'm going to name this health and fitness health and fitness phone and start building Okay, once you're in the lead pages editor, you will have these widgets here. These are simply drag and drop um, widgets. <clears throat> so for, let's say, for example, um, you don't want to put your logo here. Um, what you can do is uh, delete the logo, the logo part. And let's say you want to put a headline or maybe a countdown timer. You can simply drag it there, drop it, and it's going to 
install your countdown timer. So you can use any of these widgets here and simply drag it to where you want it to go. Um, what I'm going to do is just quickly customize this the way I want it. Um, you get my weekly emails and my exclusive free ebook. I'm happy to leave that as it is. Download the free ebook. Happy to leave everything as it is. Um, you can pretty much customize it the way you want. So to change text, you simply click in the box, highlight it. Um, this free ebook, I'm going to put you will learn. In this free ebook, you will learn. Okay, so you can see you can customize your text however you want it here. The same thing. If you want to change the size of the font, you simply highlight everything. This menu comes up here and you can simply click on the font and decide whether you want to increase like so or whether you want to decrease it like that. Okay, same with spacing. If you want to increase the space of the of the text or you want to decrease the space of the text. You can also select whichever font you want to use, whether you want it to be underlined or struck through. You can make it bold, italics, or you can adjust the alignment of the text, whether you want it to be left, center, or right. You can change the color of the text here with this button. You can change it to whatever color you want it to be. Um, if you want it to be bullet points, just as it is here, you can just simply click this button here and decide whether you want it to be check marks, numbered, or simply um, bulletin like that. Um, we're not going to link anything. What I will do is I will show you how to link text, um, for example, the call to action. So this is your call to action here. And what you will do is when you click on this button, it's going to open the editor for the call to action so you can customize it the way you want it. <clears throat> Whether you want to make it a full square, full square just basically means that it doesn't have the rounded sides, the rounded corners. <coughs> Sorry. If you want it rounded, then you can change it back. If you want it to be a circle like that, you can change it to that. So you can play around with the settings here to decide how you want to customize your button. Um, Again, the text is similar to what we did down here, so you can customize your font how you want it. What I want to do now is I want to take you to the um, to the link. So what's going to happen when the visitor clicks on this button? So when you click on this link sign, this link icon here, it opens up the settings for the lead box. So we're going to click on View Edit, and this is what the user the visitor is going to see when they click on this button so this form is going to come up here and we're going to customize this form you can customize this the way you want it you can customize the heading again if you want to drag and drop so let's say you want to add a headline here you can easily drag and drop it here the good thing that i like about lead spun lead pages sorry is that you can move your text anywhere you want it and it just pretty much snaps into place. So if you want to add it there, it's just going to snap into place. Then you can add your headline. Okay. Um, in order to customize this form, sorry, before I do that, let me go into the gear and show you what happens when you click on this gear. You can edit the section styles. So let's say right now it's color white. So the background is white. So you can see here background white. If you don't want, if you want to change the color of the background, you can use these buttons here. So you can change the background color. I liked it as white, so I'll put it back as white. But that's just the the gear icon here opens up the settings over here for this page for this box. So that's how you would customize this box. If you want to customize what's inside here, what you would do is click on the button "Get Started." It's going to open this. Um, little icon here where you can change the settings that you want for the get started and also for the box whether you want it circular like that, uh, rounded like that or square. Um, I'm going to leave it as square whether it's flat line or gradient whatever you want. You can change the font on the 
the button as well as the color of the button but I'm going to leave everything as is what I want to show you is how do you actually um, change these fields here so if you don't want to write the number um, if you don't want the email or first name what you would do is you click on the button here and it's going to open this edit your form section over here now in order to edit that form Whatever it is that the user enters into here is going to go into an email autoresponder responder, or you may have a CRM, which is a customer, I think it uh, stands for customer relations management or something like that. Um, so you may have this, you want to have this connected to an email autoresponder. Um, if you don't have an email autoresponder, leads, lead pages actually allows you to store your lead magnet in here so for example we're giving away an ebook here lead pages allows you to store your lead magnet in here so um let's see how do we do that just bear with me Okay, um, let's say we decide that we're going to leave it. Okay, so basically with the lead notifications, it's going to send emails to your, your email address letting you know when you have a lead. Okay, and then as we go on to, I believe it's actions, if we leave it as lead notifications, it's going to say do you what file do you want to email the visitor when they complete the form. You can add your lead magnet here. So if you have a PDF document, you can simply upload the lead magnet. I already have a few lead magnets here, but you can click on add a new lead magnet in account settings, and it will take you to, you can find the actual file that you want to send to your visitor, all automated for you. Um, now, the thing about this, if you only use lead notifications, they will not be placed in an autoresponder. So you, if you have an email series that you want to send that lead, of course, they're not going to receive that. They will only be receiving your lead magnets. Now, I do prefer to have an email series because you will be able to follow up with your lead. If, for example, you would like them to eventually become profitable and purchase a course or some product or service from you, you want to have that follow-up series. But that's for a different video. Um, now I'm just focusing on building this sales funnel. Now, if you want to add them to an email autoresponder, you click on add integration. You can see that I already have my Aweber account, but if you want to add whatever email integration there, you click on more services. It's going to bring up the integrations tab where you can add whatever email service that you use. Now, let's say, for instance, you're going to add MailChimp. It's going to ask you for the API key. All you do is simply click on these links here and it will help you find the API key for MailChimp. Now, I don't have a MailChimp account, so I'm not going to show you how to do that. But just click on these links. You can see here that it tells you exactly what you need to do in MailChimp. Click your profile name. So it gives you guidelines, um, guidance on how to find your API key. Um, and then what you would do is once you've found the API key, come back here, you enter your MailChimp API key. You can enter an account name. This is simply for your reference only. So if it's MailChimp, you want to identify the MailChimp account, you just simply put MailChimp and you click on Connect. Um, now, I don't want to do that because I already have Aweber connected here. So I'm going to select Aweber as my integration. and where every time you create, uh, you integrate an email autoresponder and you have created a list, an email list in that autoresponder, make sure and refresh the list because with the API key, um, both products are speaking to each other. So each time you update your MailChimp or Aweber account with a new list, come back here and refresh the list and then you would notice a list of all your email lists here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select uh, uh, email marketing. So that's going to be the list that ed when everybody signs up, they're going to be added to this email list. You can see that it's, it's been ticked here. So this has been approved. 
and then I'm going to delete this because I don't want them to receive two lead magnets or two emails from me. So that will be deleted. Then next what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to move over so you can see here that it has been deleted. So the only email autoresponder that the leads will go into is the Aweber account. I'm going to click next fields and it will be here where I would be able to customize which fields I want the lead to input. So if you want to add a field such as a name, you can do that here. Um, so you can actually change the text. So if you want to put, for example, a full name, you can do that here. And you will notice that when you click done, Okay, hold on. Please hold the text. I believe that's, let's just see if we can hear. Let me see if I click done. And, okay, so you can see that the text here has been edited as well. And then you can add whatever field you want from here. Um, and I suppose it's also dependent on the integration like they said here. So for now we will add full name and email. I'm going to move the name up so the name appears first and then the email. Then I'm going to click next actions and I'm going to tell lead pages what to do once the visitor has subscribed. So when they click the get started button, where do I want to take them next? You can take them to the default lead pages thank you page or your uh, your own lead page that you have created, which is the second lead page. You can take them to an external URL. For example, you may want to send them over to your own website where a product or service is for sale. So you can ask them to check out that product or service or you can have them remain on the page. In order to create a sales funnel, you would need to create a separate lead page. So just with the process of going back into templates, selecting the lead, uh, whatever template you want to use to design your lead page, that's what I would recommend you do. So you create your own lead page, your own separate lead page, which is the second page in the funnel. And then once you have done that, you come back to this section and simply select whichever lead page you want them to go to. So let's say, for example, I want to take the lead onto um, this thank you page, for example. I'm going to add the thank you page and then I'm going to save and close. So whenever they opt in, what's going to happen next is a after opting in, they will see my thank you page that I created. And that's pretty much it. It's automatically saved here. So every time you update this lead page, it saves. Um, what you also want to remember to do is that you want to rename this because you would notice that the URL is exactly what you named the, the actual page. So if you don't want it to be health and fitness funnel, you can simply edit this, but just be aware that uh, whatever subdomain lead pages is, um, ascribes to the funnel, that's what it's going to be. So it's going to have this subdomain and then the extension here. Um, so remember, if uh, you are signing up with lead pages and you want to use a subdomain related to your business, that you put the, the business name and then dot lead pages dot co. Okay and if you simply press save. Then once that is done, once you have your capture page exactly how you want it, just one thing that I want to touch on, when you customize this lead magnet here or this button here, all the buttons in the on the page is automatically updated, but just verified by simply clicking on the button, clicking on the link, then clicking on view edit and you will notice that everything that we did in the first lead box is duplicated onto the second lead box. So if you have any other buttons, for example, you are creating a long copy 
lead page, all the buttons would be automatically duplicated. But make sure and double check because in some instances, the actual page is formatted in such a way that it goes to maybe a checkout page. So be careful with that and ensure that all the buttons have been duplicated. So I'm going to come out of this and I am happy with how this lead page is. I'm going to publish this so that it is live on the internet. And then what I'm going to do is, once that has been published, I'm going to opt in and I'll show you exactly what happens. So let's click on view page. Okay, so this is how my page appears. It has the countdown timer. Obviously, you would need to put the settings in for the countdown timer. Um, this is how my lead page looks to the visitor. So when they click on download the free ebook, well, obviously, I, I would have customized that properly. And they enter, hold on, this is too small. Right, so... If they enter their name, for example, okay, and I click on get started. So I'm just opting in to show you what go, what happens next. You would see that it goes to the thank you page that I created. So that is how you you are creating your sales funnel. So the sales funnel is a structured or a series of pages that the lead is sent to sent through. So on your thank you page, you can put anything that you want. You can design it however you want. You can add a video. You can add some buttons, just like how I have done here. I put go to the blog. I've added um, my social media handle so that they can share it with their friends. So if, for example, you, are, um, you have your own business or you are promoting a product um, on the lead page, which is the, the first page which we designed here, you know, they would opt in for your free content. That's just so you can start building an email list. Then when they opt in, they get to the second page. Here, you could have a video talking about the actual product, um, just selling the product to, to them, letting them know um, what the product is about, the features of the product, the benefits of the product. And then in the video, you can say, there's a button below this video, click on it, and it will take you to the to the sales page where you can purchase that product. Um, so you can enter a button just like how you have it here, click uh, click on that button, and when they click on that button, they are immediately taken to the sales page. But in this case, I've entered the button to be my blog. I'll show you how to enter a button. So let's say, for example, you want, this is a button here, but you want to add your own button. What I'm gonna do is click on widgets, you will see the button widget here. You can just drop that uh, here. And you can customize this button whether you want it. So you input your call to action. So we're going to click on the button. Um, you can customize it with the font, type of font you want, the color of the font link the, the button to an external page, whether you want it to be linked to a lead page that you have already created, or whether you want it to open into a lead box, which this one opens into a lead box. So um, the settings are all there that you need to, you can play around with. Um, so it's a very simple user interface. Um, of course, there is going to be a learning curve where you would need to, you know, um, use the, the widgets, use the buttons, look at the settings, play around with the settings. Let me just show you one other thing. Um, for example, if you are going to share the page on Google or any search engine, you can always um, add the text here or update the meta tags here for your page. So to find that it's on this menu here, this is the button you would need to press to open this menu here. Um, if you are using, you want to share this page on Facebook, be certain to update your Facebook title, description, and the thumbnail so that when it is shared, the actual thumbnail for the page is dragged onto Facebook. 
um, analytics so you can add whatever tracking codes or tracking pixels if you are sharing this page on Facebook you want to make sure that your tracking pixels are on there so Facebook can accurately uh, track who has visited your page so for example this one you can see that I already have my tracking pixels on here um, so I have my lead tracking pixel, the page view tracking pixel, and subscribe button click tracking pixel. So you simply get your tracking pixel from your Facebook Ads Manager, and you add it into these relevant sections. And make sure that you click Save when you are done. So those are all the features of lead pages and building a sales funnel. So remember to build a sales funnel. Just to summarize, you select your lead page, you create each lead page separately first with the um, with the opt-in page then the second page which is will be your bridge page where you can describe in a video what the user is going to see on the sales page you can have a button below that video that connects to um, a sales page so let me show you an example of a bridge page that I created here with the lead pages so you have an idea as to what a bridge page can look like right so I'm back on my dashboard and uh, I'm going to click on this one and this was a bridge page that I created a long time ago um, just showing you exactly what that bridge page is so you create a number of pages within the lead page lead pages platform and then you connect them to each other to form your sales funnel okay so here is a, a, one of my bridge pages okay so you can see that I just simply when the lead opted in told them about the free training do you want to learn more I put a button under here which continues to the training that um, button is linked to an external URL which is there if I wanted to add a video I could simply drag it anywhere hold on I can simply drag that video anywhere here so I can put that video there anywhere that I want that video to appear let's say I put it there and then you can use whatever video for example if you want the video to be from YouTube all you would do is you get the YouTube link or the embedded code of the uh, YouTube link and you can simply paste it here and save it and that's it okay so I hope this video has been helpful showing you how you can create uh, how to create a sales funnel using lead pages like anything there is a learning curve for you to get accustomed to it but I think it's a very simple platform um, and it's certainly uh, inexpensive it's $37 a month um, to use lead pages and once you start using it you know creating your lead pages your landing pages your sales funnels will be a breeze so if you would like to try lead pages there's a link below this video if you're watching on YouTube and uh, that um, link would give you a 14 day free trial where you can try lead pages test it out and if you're happy with it then you can go with it so thank you very much for sticking around and watching my video any questions at all please leave it in the comments section if you wish to subscribe to this channel um, you know, I provide a lot of value in my videos. Um, I've also left a link in the description box to my blog where I have free tips on affiliate marketing, e-commerce, uh, email marketing, anything to help with your online business. Thanks for watching. My name is Dawn Marie Nespis and I'll see you in the next one.